It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur from the CBS Television News Staff and James Keogh, Associate Editor of Time Magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Judge Samuel S. Leibowitz. Perhaps nothing has shocked this city and the nation more in recent weeks than the crimes committed by some of our young men. Now, our guest tonight is almost without a peer in his experience in handling criminal cases both as a distinguished attorney, defense attorney, and as a judge. Judge Leibowitz, is there any way of accounting for the fact that most of the crimes committed nowadays are committed by the youngest group in our country? Well, Mr. Lasseur, the, uh, I've seen this coming for a long, long time. I remember when I was a kid lawyer, on indictment day, when the new indictments would come in, new cases would be brought to the attention of the court. You'd see men of 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, and so, and older, being arraigned before the bar for murder and robbery and rape and felonious assault and grand larceny and so on. But today, if you come to our criminal courts all over the nation, you'll find a veritable procession of kids, youngsters, who if the clock were turned back, they would be in knee pants. Now, the cause of that is, uh, is apparent to seeing eyes. We've had a, a, a decline in the age incidence over the years, so that year after year, the age of the criminal has decreased, so that today we have a veritable procession of kids that come into these criminal courts charged with the most terrible, horrible crimes. Well, Judge, do you... Uh do you think that the young people of today really are, are worse than they were when, when you were a boy? Oh, good heavens, no. I, if, uh, I don't mean to indict a whole nation of, uh, of, of youths. Uh, God help us if uh, all of our kids were, were juvenile delinquents or juvenile criminals, but we've had a terrific increase in the number of youngsters who fall by the wayside and who turn up in this house of tragedy where I preside charged with uh, these terrible crimes, even including murder in the first degree. Well, Judge, do you think that these cases are those for a psychiatrist, or are they cases for criminal courts? Well, that's... Uh, <laughs> of course, there are cases that demand the service of a psychiatrist. And uh, all cases demand the services of the judge after the defendant has been arrested. There must be a combination of both. Of course, there are cases where a psychiatrist, psychiatrist can't do a blessed thing. And this mumbo-jumbo, uh, some of this psychiatric nomenclature, some of these uh, phrases that are pinned on various people are not very helpful. There are cases where a psychiatrist, if he catches the youngster in, its, uh, in his early stages, may be of tremendous help. But once they become hardened, once they become set, once they've gotten the bit in their teeth, then, uh, heaven help us, the psychiatrist can't do very much. Do you think and we the are... the court can't do very much either. Do you think we are applying uh, psychology a little too much and punishment a little too little? Well, punishment is uh, psychology. The, uh, the old uh, strap that the father used to swing in the, wood, in the legendary woodshed was a bit of psychology. Today... I'm speaking of the, the juvenile criminal or the incipient juvenile criminal, the juvenile delinquent. Today, the juvenile delinquent has no respect whatever. He has no respect for father and mother, no respect for the policeman on the street corner, no respect for the teacher in the classroom, no respect for the clergyman, be he priest or minister or rabbi. Well, he has no respect, for, has he has no respect for the respect. law. How's that? What has caused this lack of respect? Is it that we are not worthy of respect, we elders of these? Judges? Well, it's, it's been a weakening of the moral fiber, a clear across the nation, of the moral tone of the nation. It seems that today people worship 
electric ice boxes and gadgets and newfangled things and automobiles. And if you pick up your magazines and turn from page to page, you'll see that it's full of lipsticks and, uh, and certain things that the ladies wear. And uh, it, we've, we've sort of uh, emphasized the, the, the dross, the icing on the cake, instead of the real basic things in life. And uh, it's been translated down into the into the uh, into the child. Judge, when you were a defense attorney, I remember you defended the Scottsboro boys. Now, do you think there are any uh, racial or regional differences between our young men or tendencies towards any particular type of crime? You mean this crime centered among certain races? Yes. Oh heavens! Or regions? Oh heavens! No, that's uh, what people like to believe. Is it centered, Judge, uh, in any way in one uh, strata of society, in one class? Do you find more... Well, uh, well, of course. You take a kid who has rich parents. They probably have two or three automobiles in the garage. That kid doesn't have to go out and steal an automobile. He has an automobile. He doesn't have to go, ho uh, go out with a gun and hold up a shopkeeper. He has plenty of money in his jeans. But the poor kid of the slums, he yearns for these pleasures, which the other kid has. He wants to have a joyride, he wants to have an automobile, he wants some money in his pocket, he wants to take out a girl, he wants to go into some bistro and have a, a drink of scotch or rye, and so he goes out and steals to get the wherewithal to get these pleasures. And yet, sir, some of the most shocking crimes have mm. occurred in this, in this upper economic strata, nevertheless, among these people who have the privileges. Well, now, you, you, you remember the Loeb and Leopold case. There were two kids of millionaire parents. They didn't have to steal. They didn't have to take a boy and, and kill him and hold him for ransom and send the ransom notes to these uh, distraught parents. They did it for a thrill. They did it for a thrill just uh, in the same fashion that some uh, individual uh, who, uh, who has had tasted all of the pleasures of life uh, looks for a new thrill, and some of them take to dope. I mean in the upper strata, in some sections of the country. And the kid looks for a thrill, likewise. And uh, that's the answer to it. They look for a thrill. Uh, they, the thrill is not in holding up somebody. The thrill is in killing somebody. Well, Judge Lee, would you think our police departments are efficient? Are there enough policemen, say, patrolling the streets? Well, Mr. Lesseur, of course we haven't enough policemen. But I want to say this about our New York City Police Department. I think it's the finest police department in the entire country. I don't think there's a police department anywhere, in any section of America, that's finer than our New York cops. They're wonderful, wonderful public servants. And I might say this, they're woefully, woefully underpaid. The policeman has a hard struggle to keep body and soul together, to feed his family, to buy a dress for his wife, or a pair of shoes for his kid. But Judge Lee, was there any <clears throat> kind of preventative treatment that, that the police could practice in order to keep our children from becoming delinquents or actually getting into courts such as yours? Well, I think the, the thing should be handled in this fashion. I'm not a believer in uh, indiscriminate uh, club swinging. If a policeman is attacked, of course, he should protect himself with his club, if necessary. But if he's permitted to encourage to use his club ind indiscriminately, some uh, foolish policeman is likely to uh, strike some innocent citizen on the head and fracture his skull. And then there'll be such a revulsion of feeling that the pendulum will swing the other way because we're a nation uh, of pendulums. We swing from one extreme to the other. Now, my thought in the matter is this. I think the policeman should uh, walk up to these young loafers and hoodlums on the street corner and tell them to move on. And if they don't move on, I think he ought to back up a patrol wagon, a police wagon, or pie wagon as they call it, and put them in the patrol wagon and take them off the court. And then if we had judges of the juvenile and adolescence court that had backbone, and there are some, but there are a few that haven't, you feel they would... That they would take care of these young uh, hoodlums and send them off to jail. Now, I don't mean to incarcerate a youngster for months 
but I'd send them into jail for two or three days, let them see what this, what the inside of a prison looks like. Let them sleep on that, uh, that bed uh, where the linen is not as nice and clean as the one mother, the type mother supplies. When he'd wake up in the morning and see these bars in front of his eyes, well, and you, see uh, the turnkey propose... come there with the, with the slop, it wouldn't be the kind of breakfast mother serves. Would you propose special course or special prisons for these young people? Well, we have special courses. Well, are they doing them. a good job? Uh, uh, let me put it this way. I think we have a body of fine, dedicated men and women who are on our adolescent and juvenile courts. But some of them are soft in the head. You feel Some they should them. be sterner than they are. Well, that well, is, send well, more of the, of the young people to jail. Well, I wouldn't send a, a, a youngster to jail who's made his first mistake, but after you've put him on probation the first time, and he goes out, and time after time after time after time, probation, 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 it makes a joke out of the law. Instead of curbing the youngster, you're encouraging him well, Judge in his Eagle, disrespect. I know you've talked to many, many parents of boys and girls who have gone wrong. Is there anything in particular that you recommend to the parents in order to straighten out their children? Well, that would take hours and hours to, to discuss. But there's one thing uh, that, might, uh, that I might call to the attention of the parents of America, especially the young parents, those who have just brought youngsters into the world, and that is this. Many, many parents compete for the affection of the child. The mother is bidding for the affection, the father bids for the affection. And in many instances, they try to gain affection or obtain affection or retain affection by bribery. Uh, in some cases, the, the mother overrules the father. The father overrules the mother. The mother may say, let's, uh, Johnny, go to bed. The, the father may say, the mother may say, oh, why, why not let the boy stay up? And, uh, and that's, uh, that's a very bad thing for children. Well, thank you, Judge Ebert. In other words, it all depends upon the family. Well, we're very pleased to have you up here tonight. Thank you, sir. The opinions expressed on the Longine Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and James Keogh. Our distinguished guest was Judge Samuel S. Leibowitz. A Longine watch is...